Okay, here we are with part seven, where we're going to learn how to render the final shot. In this lesson, we're going to move the content we have here into the Solaris context, which is where you can assign materials, set up lights and cameras, and render. So before we get there, let's go to the rubber toy here, and let's turn off the animation of the bricks. Uh, that way we can go just to frame one, and we don't have to worry about that right now. We're going to keep the squab hidden, and we're going to focus on these three pieces right here. To do this, we're going to go to the Solaris context here. This is a slightly different area of Houdini. We're going to go Tab, Scene, Import, and we're going to place that down. Now we're going to go to the objects here. Click, brings up this window, and we're going to take the ground, press Shift, and pick those three. Oh, shift and all those three. And accept pattern. And those are all brought in. And if we use our view tools, we can see we've got a very big grid with the pegboard in the middle and the rubber toy. Now notice we don't have the colors of the rubber toy in here. Uh, they will come back when we assign a material. Uh, or when we render. They're just not working in the viewport right here because we have what's called a Houdini GL. Now, when we bring these in, let's just go up here and go slash geo. That creates a sort of a subgroup that all of this can go into, saying these are all the pieces of geometry. Now, let's take uh, this and sort of just move it maybe a little more like this. And now we want to put a camera on that. So we're going to go to here and click on camera. Now, that zoomed it out a little bit. Let's turn on that lock there and then we can move these pieces in and just get a little bit closer. Perfect. And unlock that. And the reason we do that is if we angle the view like this, we lose the camera but we can get it back. Whereas if we had that locked, every time we'd make a view change, um, we would change the camera. and we want, to, we want to keep the camera the way that it is. So let's click on the environment light tool here, which adds a dome light to the scene. And we're going to go to the texture. And we're going to go uh, HDRI and get this uh, Skylit Garage, except. And this creates lighting for this. To see what that lighting's looking like, let's go to Karma XBU. Now you see that the uh, bricks came back. So we're, we're the color of the bricks came back now that we're rendering. And this, here's the lighting sort of working the way that it is. If we go 0.5, uh, we can darken that a little bit. We'll bring back some of the, the color by actually um, adding a point light. Now we can also, if we scroll down here, there's a little button here that will turn on the denoiser. And that will resolve some of the uh, noise a little faster as we're working. So let's click on the uh, point light tool. Uh, it shows us initially from the point light's point of view, which is not what we want. Let's go back to here and say cameras. We're going to go Shift F1 to hide uh, those little hints. We're going to go Shadow. And that will allow us to click here and then uh, Shift click here. And we probably want this to be maybe like 500. And that uh, now we start to see a bit of a shadow there. And if we want to shift select there, we can shorten the shadow a little bit. So we've got this neat tool to allow us to set up our lights right here in this view. Now, we want to have some materials on this. So we're going to go tab, quick, surface material. And we're going to call this rubber toy. material uh, and we're going to leave that white and we're going to alt click and drag to make, create two more and we're going to call this one pegboard material and the last one ground material and the pegboard we're going to make uh, the color gray and the ground we're going to go and make it green, uh, but maybe darken the green up a little bit. Let's go a little darker with that until it punches out a little bit. 
Now, making these doesn't assign them. To assign them, we need, we're need we going to bring in a special tool. Uh, we're also going to just drop this down. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to merge these in. We'll put the merge here and feed the materials into there. Then we're going to drop those down a little bit. And we're going to go tab, material, and linker. And once we've got that, we plug that in. And what this allows us to do is, for instance, we can put the rubber toy material and then open up Geo here and say, let's put the rubber toy on there. That brightens it up a little bit, um, but it doesn't change it too much. Then the pegboard material, get the pegboard geometry, assign that. That darkens that a little bit. And then the ground material, we're going to bring that over and click on the ground and put that in. And that's going to give us a green sort of background there. And that, you know, that gives us all the assignments we need. Now we could at this point say, okay, we're going to change this to uh, 0.3 to sort of go a little darker there and maybe punch this up to 600. Those are options as we work and tweak this. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to render an individual shot of this. So we're going to go tab karma, and this will put down two nodes. We're going to feed this into here, and let's change this to shot one. Uh, and this is going to be a still image shot. Now, when you go and do this, uh, if you click on the render settings, it goes to CPU by default. We want to stay with XPU. And it does turn off the denoiser. So we've got to click Filter and Optics Denoiser if we want to bring that back from a rendering point of view. Now once we have those, we've got our render size and everything ready to go. So we're going to click on here and we're going to go Render to Mplay. And this will uh, render to a sort of render preview window that we can look at. And there we go. And there's our rendering. So we've been able to take... Uh, these objects, bring them in the Solaris context, assign materials, and render. Okay, now that we have this as a still frame, let's try to do an animated version of this. So just let's go back to the object level, go into rubber toy, and we're going to turn on the animated bricks, and then go back to the stage where we've been working. Now the, the object disappears and now we can bring it back in stages uh, through the animation process there. Now currently we've got 120 frames we don't need, or 240 frames, we don't need that, we need 120. Uh, apply, close, and let's take these two nodes and we're going to alt drag them over to here. And Now that we have this we're going to change uh, on here we want to change that to brick phi anim and we'll use dollar f2 to the 2 is for the padding We're good to go there now we go to this this part here we say current frame range from 1 to 120 okay we don't need to worry about those Okay, so now once we've got that, we can click this. Just make sure we've got here the filter denoisers on. We're going to go back here, and we're ready to go. Okay, so let's click Render to Disk. This brings up this little widget here. It allows us to keep tabs of the progress. And as it's running through the various uh, steps, uh, we will be able to uh, see the results at the end. So I'm going to pause this for now, and we're going to come back uh, once this is ready. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, so now we can go render and play load disk files. We're going to find these in the render folder, and we can select those and load. Now because of the animation, we don't have any bricks yet, but if we press play, we see those build up over the time. And there we go. So we've now got this asset working, working both at the working both as a digital asset 
that you can share and use with different objects, uh, but also some an asset that passes its information uh, off to the Solaris context where you can render. So that asset is functioning, building the bricks, instancing the bricks, which come over and, and render efficiently in Karma. And there we go. So congratulations. I hope you had fun with this lesson. And there's lots more uh, that you can try out to further explore uh, the features of Houdini. Have a great day.